All right, cool. OK, welcome everyone. Um, welcome to our Robotoads Parent Info Night. Um, this is our second one of the season, but this is going to be a more just like general discussion on like our upcoming 2022 FRC season and just some general Robotoads information that many of you might want to know for this upcoming year. Um, thank you guys for coming and thank you to those at home who are watching this from our YouTube channel. Um, we're sorry you can't make it, but I'm glad you're being able to get all of this information in. So <clears throat> first thing is today's agenda. We kind of have a lot to cover, um, but we'll have questions at the end if you have any further questions on anything, but we'll start with some introductions um, of who's presenting today and our general team leadership move into the robotics income slash expensive expenses breakdown just kind of like what how much money we need and where it's going to um, we'll touch on our team slash asb fee and our silent auction fundraiser that's coming up um, we're going to talk about under my wing which is one of our training programs um, our outreach and then talking about what to expect for this build season since it has been a few years since we've had like a normal build season. So even some returning parents might be a little curious on what that's going to look like with COVID and everything. Um, and then finally, we'll be kind of just talking about ways to help. So with like mentoring our parent booster club and parent committees. So starting off with just like our introductions. Um, for the leadership people that are here, introduce yourself and then our presenters will as well. So Ms. Herzog. Hi, hi, I introduced myself already. So Mrs. Herzog, I'm the teacher at Sammamish and I'm the team coach. I've been with the team 15 years, so a long time. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time. Okay, Evan. Um, I'm Evan, I'm the uh, lead mentor on the team, so I'm responsible for um, organizing the mentors and, and making sure the students have what they need to be successful in a way that's um, in line with what the team's trying to accomplish. Ms. Dooley. Hi, I'm Mrs. Julie. I am the logistics mentor and I handle a lot of the weird stuff that sometimes the kids can't handle, like uh, transportation and carpools and uh, airplane trips and hotel rooms and things like that. Awesome. Uh, hi, my name's Kitty and my other team captain, Tesby, is unable to make it today, but we are the team's team captains. Um, we just kind of oversee everything and are the main people responsible for leading the team to success and making sure everyone's having a good time. Um, if you have any, if we ever contact you, it'll be through captain at robototes.com. Uh, is Julian or Parker here? Or let's see. Probably not. Okay. Um, Julian and Parker are our logistics leads. So along with Ms. Dooley, they are the main communicators with you guys. So if you haven't already, please unblock the domain for like logistics at robototes.com so that you can receive emails from us and are aware of things like this that are happening and are important that you do attend or follow up with. Um, that's kind of like the key thing for this part. Uh, Cole. Hey, I'm Cole. I'm the mechanical lead here. Um, I basically oversee all of the training, all, everything to do with mechanical, whether it be CAD, design, production, training. It's through me and I oversee it. And so I work with a lot of your kids and teach them at every meeting. Yeah. Thanks, Cole. Um, Alyssa is our business lead, but she's unable to make it today. So Tim, our... I think you're like marketing lead she appointed you to. So Tim, you want to introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm, I'm Tim. I am leader of marketing team, which is like advertises and that works with marketing. 
Thank you, Tim. Um, Lucy, are you here? Are you able to introduce yourself? I thought I, thought I saw her name. Oh, maybe she's, wait, is she here? It might be your parent that's here. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, so that's okay. fine. Yeah. So Lucy is our outreach lead. I just muted myself. I'm so sorry. Lucy is our outreach lead, and we'll get into more of what like she does and how you guys can get involved with her. But outreach at robotels.com is another email to um, look out for. Cutting is our awards lead, Leo our media lead, Tristan our design lead, Moniba our electrical lead, and William our FTC team captain and liaison. So yeah, some of these people aren't able to make it today, which is fine, but just want to give you a heads up of like who exactly is in charge of what, and we'll get into like more of what exactly those things mean later. Katie, could I also introduce uh, Miss Clark? Anne Marie Clark is here. Who, yes. She's got her camera on there. She's a parent of William, and um, she's leading our effort to start and uh, and continue our uh, parent booster club. So would you like to just say hi, Anne-Marie, right now? But you get a chance to speak later as well. Hello, I am working with the team on form, um, both the FTC and the FRC on forming a parent booster club. And I or I am William Bancroft's mom. So yay. Good. Awesome. All right. So let's kind of go over some of what exactly to expect for like regarding money and stuff. So this is like a quick like spreadsheet of like what are where we got most of our funding from 2019. Um, as you can see, it might be a little hard to like um, decipher, but it's separated into grants, sponsorship and fees. So a lot of our grants, um, Ms. Herzog fills out and we get like a decent amount of money for that. Um, a lot of our business team works with our sponsors and they either donate through corporate matching hours, corporate gifts. Um, a lot of that is through friends and family. So like your guys's monetary donations and other companies that donate us money. Um, but a very large a part of our funding is um, our fees, which is our team membership fee. Um, we can get into that in a bit later, but this is just kind of like a breakdown of what exactly is going on. Granted, it was like two years ago, but this is like what our regular kind of expenses and income kind of looks like. Um, we have like a small thing at the bottom for Worlds because that year we did go to Worlds. Um, we didn't expect it, but it's just kind of like a quick summary of what exactly that looks like. Um, these are our expenses from 2019, so this is like what we're like spending money on. Um, a lot of it is our competition fee, which is like $12,000. Um, most of that is paid off by like grants and stuff, but um, a lot of it is spent on actual robot parts and then money for outreach events, um, travel like school buses and things like that. And then our team uniforms like our team shirt and team sweatshirt, which is included with paying the team fee. So every kid on the team gets a shirt and a sweatshirt um, for the season. Um, Ms. Herzog, do you have any additional comments on like anything regarding like the income or expenses? Um, yeah, only that it it's probably a little bit shocking if you, you know, aren't exposed, haven't never been, have never been exposed to first robotics uh, at the high school level before. It is a very expensive team to run, and we do get a lot of money from grants, and like Kitty said, and from um, corporate uh, uh, sponsorships and uh, corporate matching funds. So I think Kitty will talk about this later, that um, if you work for a company that will donate money like Microsoft, for volunteering, we get a lot of money from that. Um, so we're we're going to be asking parents to tr you know try to find out if your company um, will do that. We'll give a match for your volunteer hours, and that like really helps out our team um, a lot. Um, we also have travel expenses that it would be nice to not have to charge so much for the students when we travel. Um, because right now uh, we usually have the students pay their their entire way 
for traveling and it you know we our goal would be to try to bring those fees down if we can um, so we're always trying to raise more money to, to cover that um, but yeah if you have any questions about the the budget the budget <laughs> the budget and expenses um, please let me know and um, I'd be happy to talk to you about that awesome Okay, so kind of breaking down into it. So our team does charge a fee. Um, it is a hundred and fifty dollars per student. Um, like I said earlier, it includes our team shirt and team sweatshirt within that. Um, it's kind of a break a breakdown of that, like around fifty dollars ish for the shirt and sweatshirt. Around fifty dollars is for like buses and transportation. Since our team is growing, we are going to need to rely on school buses a lot more if we don't have enough like parents to do like carpools and stuff. Um, but that rounds about to around $50 per student so we can cover it all. And then the rest just goes towards supplies and robot parts because those are expensive. Um, we also, ASB does like, because we are an ASB club, they do charge a fee of $75. Um, so that is paid towards like the ASB, like itself, associated student body. So we do not get that money, but that is just like, a fee for being a part of an ASB club. So that's kind of like a fee rundown for that. Um, we do have scholarships for students who are unable to pay the $150. Um, they just need to talk to our accountant, Ms. Healy, and um, the BSD. Like if you qualify for free and reduced lunch, that you just get a scholarship for that and you do not have to pay that at all. So we do believe in like, you know, not. Um, What's it called? Being like exclusive towards people who aren't who are fortunate enough to be able to pay the hundred dollar hundred fifty dollar fee, but um, there are scholarships if necessary. So we want to be inclusive and make sure everyone gets a chance to do robotics. Um, okay, so a way that we have been raising money for like the past three years, which is our big fundraiser which is our third annual silent auction. And Tim is going to talk about this. So. Um, so basically, the silent auction is a way for us to raise money for our team to just get more funds. Online will be December 2nd uh, from 12 p.m. To to well, it starts at noon, then goes to the sec to the third day, which of <laughs> to the second day, which is December third, and ends at twelve um twelve noon too. That is the online portion, and then the in person portion is December fourth from two to five p.m. in the SHS atrium, which is right outside the robotics room. Um. In-person parents will have a chance to see one of our robots in action. And we need auction items donated. Donations, if you guys want to donate anything, email the email right on the PowerPoint right there. And basically, yeah, the silent auction is going to be fun and will help us out a lot. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, our business team has been working really, really hard to put this together. Um, we started this my first year and it was all online or all in person because we uh, thank you, Alyssa, for putting the email in the chat. Um, so it was all in person and we raised around four thousand dollars and then uh, last year our auction was all online because of COVID where we raised, I think, like $3,700. And so our goal this year is around like, I think $5,000, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we're gonna be having an online portion, which is like Tim said, the second and the third of December, and then an in-person portion, which is the Saturday of December 4th. I believe it's Saturday, right? Yeah, it's a Saturday. Saturday, December 4th from two to five um, in the atrium. So I'll just give you guys a chance to kind of like see what we're doing, check out our shop um, and do some in-person sign auction stuff. 
Um, yes. So question in the chat, what is the target audience for the auction? What type of items would be good to donate? Very good question. So in the past we've, oh, Alyssa, OK. Yay. OK, Alyssa's going to talk. Our business Sorry, is gonna... the voice is a little bit, it's all good. Anyways, um, so target audience for the auction items would be good to donate. I would say auction items like we have stuff that can be sold that side pretty well, but auction items that would be absolutely great and amazing from all of you wonderful parents is items that I guess would be targeted towards parents or stuff that can be bid for a higher value. For example, um, I was thinking of like asking my parents to donate like tickets to like, I don't know, a wine tasting event because they literally went a few days ago. So something like that, um, maybe not wine because we are a school organization, but something like that. I remember uh, my first year on the team, we had opera tickets donated by Miss Andrea, our wonderful business mentor. Uh, another thing was we had like Stone Garden, you know, that rock climbing place, place um, in Crossroads. We had waivers from there. That was really cool. But yeah, that kind of stuff too. And also in general, kind of just maybe like kits or sets were something practical that somebody would need. I think we had like a barbecue grill set at one point, um, but that's kind of all I can remember from the top of my head. But that kind of stuff is really cool and we would love that from you guys. Anyways, thank you for supporting us. Thank you, Alyssa. But yeah, if you have any additional questions or just like want like, Feed, like you could literally just like email Alyssa at business business at robosos.com and um we're willing to just like accept anything that you guys would be willing to donate as like an auction item like she said I think we did have a grill at one point I think we also had a drone um and like a few other things that were just kind of like stuff people had lying around that they just wanted to donate so um but yeah please 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 email business at robotos.com because we would love to um, have you guys participate and have your donations so that we can make this auction a big success this year. Um, okay, moving forward. Um, so under my wing, uh, this is one of the training programs that we've established that, or we established last year, but now we're implementing in person this year, which is really exciting. Um, so it's like a group based training program. It used to be a buddy based thing but we have so many new members this year that we just don't have enough like big buddies to like pair up every individual new member so we're kind of just doing it group based and like it's very project based work um so they're like paired up with an experienced member and they get to work through different projects and learn about the different aspects of robotics um it's kind of how we're doing training this year uh you know depending on what their interest is in they will be paired up with like uh, experience number respectively and it's just a really good way for them to like get involved and kind of like have that personal connection because we are an 80 plus person team this year which is a lot of people um, but we really want to make sure that like everyone is getting that interpersonal connection with every member and learning something at the end of the day so we're really pushing to make sure that everyone on the team is learning something and everyone on the team feels like their voice is being heard and they have connections and are having fun with it. So that's really awesome. Um, our team outreach. So we haven't been able to do as much of this this year because of COVID and safety precautions with that and everything. But in general, our team does a lot of outreach events, virtual or in person. Um, they're a really important part of our team. Uh, it helps to spread STEM learning, recruit younger students, and it helps us win awards at competitions and stuff. It's also just a really fun way to, for students to practice their public speaking skills and get more comfortable talking about robotics to people who aren't as familiar with it. Um, uh, for each upcoming outreach event that we like start to schedule in, we will email you with more information because we do need like parent like chaperones and like volunteers to help like just like help to oversee and manage the things um lucy our outreach lead will reach out to you guys with more information on that once those things start to get rolled out but we do require each student to participate in at least one outreach event so um we're definitely going to need your guys' support when it comes to that um 
yeah, but with COVID, obviously we haven't been able to do as much of it this year, but again, we're figuring it out and there's still a lot of learning going on. So ultimately that's the most important thing at the end of the day. Okay, so our build season schedule. Uh, so basically, if you're unfamiliar, currently we are in our preseason and January 8th, is going to be like our kickoff where we receive like um, the challenge for the year where we like get together, strategize, come up with different ideas on how we want to like go about like getting as much points as we can and what kind of approach we want to take um, and in designing that robot for it. And so that is going to be at 9 a.m. at our Sammamish shop. So usually we might go to other places, but today, this year, we're going to be at our shop at school. Um, this will be a Saturday as well, so just like a heads up for that. Um, build season runs from then until the end of February, where like the um, like six weeks are like up, and then we start moving into competition season. Um, since COVID is very much still a thing, there will be limited attendance. And so sometimes we can only take like 10 people. This includes mentors. So we definitely, we will not be able to have spectators for these events, which is really kind of sucky because that's like the most, the time where you get to see robotics come alive and where all the hard work kind of pays off for that. But it is very likely that these events will be streamed online. So you, yeah, like Ms. Suli said in the chat, they're usually live streams so you guys can still watch from home as well, well as with, all of the other members who unfortunately will not be able to come just because of COVID and everything. Um, but for our competition schedule, so we will be attending Glacier Peak competition, which is in Snohomish on from March 5th to 6th to the 6th. So it's like a two day event. Um, we will be hosting a competition um, at our school on March 18th to the 20th. So since we're going to be hosting it, we're going to need help setting up and tearing down. So that is where you guys are going to be able to come in and help us with that. We will most likely need a lot of parent volunteers to help set up the field and stuff just because like this past year, we had like a massive truss for the competition where like robots hang like hang from. Um, only parents or like adults over the 18 and weren't like on the team were able to like Put that up so a lot of the field setup although students are encouraged to go a lot of it is done by parents so we would really appreciate you guys just like being able to come out and help us out with that um and then tear down same thing it'll be sunday after after the competition it'll be similar to how we kind of did it with like boardy recharge if you guys were made aware of like the off-season event that we ran earlier this year um but it's obviously a first official thing, so it'll be like less work on our part. Um, potential third competition in the Auburn area on from March 26th to the 27th or April 2nd to 3rd. We're still figuring that out, but it's a possibility. And if we qualify the district championships, which will be in Smoke, Smokane, Spokane um, on April 6th to the 10th, and then the world championships in Houston on April 20th to the 23rd, but the World Championships are very, they have limited attendance for which teams can come as well, so we'll see if we can make it, but um, District Championships is probably the more likely, like, you actually kind of need to worry about this kind of event, but um, fingers crossed, you know, we don't know what's going to happen this season, but um, yeah. Things are like subject to change as well. Oh, a guest in the lobby. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. and, and just to let everybody know, we're going to try our best to get as many students um, as we possibly can to be able to attend competitions. Um, sometimes we can, well, the, the main thing we can do is try to get our students to volunteer. Because if you can volunteer, you're guaranteed to be able to go to the competition. So we've really been pushing that. 
And then, um, and then we might be able to do some things where, you know, some, some students go one day, another set of students go another day. So we can, we're going to really try to get everybody involved um, that we possibly can. Um, it's just if, if we can't let everybody go, I just hope parents understand that it's not, any, you know, it's not because we didn't do our best to try to get everybody there. We really, really want everybody to be able to go because it's kind of the culmination of everything we do and it's fun. And um, what we can possibly do is have like streaming parties too and get, you know, get our group together maybe at Sammamish to kind of stream it and, you know, have that excitement all together. So we'll do what we can. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Miss Dooley, do you want to talk about this from like a parent perspective? Sure. Um, so, one of the things that I didn't know coming into this when Tristan was freshman was basically what's a competition like? What? Why is this so important? Um, and I think he's still not forgiven me for taking him away on February break his freshman year, and he didn't make drive team. Um, Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. So what's it like? A small group usually goes up with Friday night to load the pit and the robot with a trailer. And usually either I will drive that group up or Evan will. Uh, those of us who drive students are approved by the Bellevue School District to drive. We've submitted an application. Um, I'm actually a Bellevue School District employee. For those of you who didn't know, I'm a substitute teacher. So I am fully qualified and checked and background checked for all of that. Um, Evan, as our lead mentor, also goes through the first youth protection program, so he is fully screened as well for that. Um, anyway, we usually take the pit up and we set up our pit. What does that mean? It means we have two large rolling toolboxes plus work surfaces, and then we have some framework elements that are decorative and that just define our 10 foot by 10 foot space. And that's where we repair our robot during the competition. Um, or we change out the wheels when the tread runs down, or we keep our batteries charged, all sorts of things. And we got a couple people. Uh, Cole is usually our pit boss as the mechanical lead, and Monib helps him there a lot too. Um, Tristan's always there. Uh, he's been the driver for uh, the past year, so he's usually there. And then there's usually one or two other kids. We try, we've been trying to take underclassmen so that they can learn how to set up the pit and get that experience. So that's been fun. Um, our competitions are usually two days. Most of them are local, so we go up and come back the same day. Um, we usually meet Saturday or Sunday morning. Saturday is usually six, Sunday is usually seven for the bus, and we go up because a lot of the bus rides are, are 45 minutes or so, um, and the venues open an hour after the times I set there, and um, we're hoping to continue doing that this year. We'll see exactly how many people we can take. I know some events will have, uh, if there's more space in the venue, then they can have more students. And it all depends on what the school districts put down as their limits. Uh, competition lasts all day, both days on Saturday. Uh, oh, and we have parents provide lunch and dinner for the team or kids bring their own. Um, and that varies a lot. Sometimes parents will get together and, and do a taco bar. Um, we've had chili walking walking chili before with uh, Frito, bags of Fritos. We've had, um, I frequently get Taco Bell when I when I absolutely have to, because they have, uh, they're great, they have gluten-free and vegan food. So it's actually a fairly inexpensive and um, satisfies most dietary needs on the team. But of course, anyone who has a special diet or doesn't want to eat that will bring their own food. And Saturdays we should have dinner also because it frequently goes from um, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m is it's, a, it's 30 teams coming and it's a long competition. For district and world champs, um, if we go to either of those, those are overnight field trips. And usually they run from after school Wednesday to Sunday afternoon because of how we need to do driving for field trips. Um, and any of those students going would miss school this year because none of that is during a break. Um, when we travel, it's usually about a maximum of 30 students that we can take just because traveling with more than that is impractical. Um, however, if you would like to take your own child and volunteer at the event, you can. Um, yeah, I volunteered at an event over Halloween in California with Tristan, so I'm a referee. Um, and some COVID protocols this year. 
everyone attending, and this is all first volunteers, mentors, and coaches. Um, actually, those people, I believe, all the adults need to be vaccinated. Uh, first has said that if you are not vaccinated to their mentors and coaches and adults, that they, uh, they have remote opportunities for you to volunteer, but that to be in the venue as an adult or a volunteer, you or as an adult volunteer or mentor, you need to be vaccinated. For those under 18 students on the team, um, those students need to have either provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. So there is the opportunity uh, if you can't be vaccinated to have testing. Um, and that's going to be something that kids will probably need to show at each event. I don't know. Each event will probably do it differently. We just did one last weekend for the FTC team um, that was very successful. And our FTC team is currently uh, ranked fifth in the world. So huge thumbs up to them. That's where Tristan is right now working on that. Yep. Yay. Um, so when we went into that event, I was able to actually say that I had collected all the vaccine cards um, because nobody is required to go. Um, everybody voluntarily did that, um, shared that with me um, so that they could go. Uh, the other option would have been they could have just showed their card or a picture on their phone. We'll see what each event comes up with. And you know, many of these aren't for another three or four months. So who knows exactly what state we'll be in by then. Um, masks will be required at all times also for um, COVID protocol this year. And First Washington is very, very cautious. And they've done they've done a really good job as far as I've seen with, you know, dealing with COVID um, as we return to events. All right, thank you, Ms. Dooley. Um, also, reminder, we will be taking questions at the end, but um, th I know this is a lot of information to process at once. We will be like posting this info like and reminding you guys about it in an email like as like competitions come up, obviously, but just like a heads up kind of thing. OK, so ways that you can help the team. Oh my goodness. So um, Anne Marie, do you want to talk about the parent booster clubs? Because I feel like that's the main thing. So we are starting brand new this year, a parent booster club. Uh, it's for Sammamish Robotics, so both the FRC and FTC team. And we sort of have three prongs of, of thought. For it. One is fundraising and two is advocacy, particularly with the Bellevue school system. Uh, there's a lot of changeover in the administration and they're unfamiliar with the value of the robotics program and um, what set, such real world experience kids get working on teams and project management. It's not just coding a robot and building a robot. They, they get a lot of good experience. And the, because of the changes in administration, uh, the school system may or may not know the value. And also on uh, coordinating parent volunteers, there's a, always a need for mentors. And then there's a need for coordinating things like that we have potluck dinners and a lot of people will sign up to bring the potluck but we need somebody to organize the potluck and things like that so we're brand 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 new and we have no structure we have no officers we have the only thing we have is a url to donate money which if you want to donate money we'll be happy to take it um, but we also need people to help to be officers, to build websites, to do any, any, if you're interested in advocacy, if you're interested in fundraising, if you're interested in anything, let me know. And we're going to have to have a formation thing. But by virtue of having a, uh, a kid in the program, you are a member of the Booster Club. And where the Booster Club is open to anybody who's interested in supporting the Sammamish Robotics. So 
robotics, alumni, grandparents, neighbors, guardians, anybody, if you're interested in supporting the goals of the robot team, your teams, you're welcome to be a member of the Worcester Club. But you all are automatically members, so go for it. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. And I just want to jump in here. Um, I just want to make it really clear that um, I've, I've been begging for a booster club to be formed for years. And the reason is that over time, like Anne-Marie was alluding to, uh, administration changes and um, we need consistency to be able to advocate for the team. Um, currently, you know, our athletic activities director, Wes Newton, is 100% on board. He's so supportive of our team. Mr. Richardson is very supportive of our team, our principal, but that might change. And over time, our administrations change, people in charge change. Um, Jeff Lowell, who's the head of activities for the district, is very supportive of robotics. Um, so I just want to make sure, you know, our parents know we have huge support right now, but let's continue that. Let's, you know, let's keep making sure that the Bellevue School District, or excuse me, the Bellevue School Board and, you know, all of our administration over time into the future <laughs> continues to understand the, the value of FIRST Robotics and, um, you know, how much our, our kids are getting out of this. And also, um, you know, in the past, I've kind of been the main advocate for the team within the Bellevue School District, and I'm not going to be here forever. So <laughs> it's very, very important that that mantle gets shifted, that advocacy mantle gets shifted on to a new group that's going to be permanent and stick around for a long time. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Thank you. And spe spe speaking of go going on, it would be nice to get parents of underclassmen involved because then you can be here for a couple of years as the right now the team has a lot of seniors and sort of the experienced parents are also going to graduate. So we need we need parents who are going to be around for a while as well. As, as people who've historically volunteered. Yeah, and honestly, without the help of our mentors and like parents and all the adults involved, we wouldn't be able to do robotics. And so honestly, just like, even if it just means like donating some of your time or donating an item to the auction, we really appreciate any kind of help or support that you guys give us. But yeah, please contact Anne-Marie if you're interested. Um, you could probably just reach her through Ms. Herzog or Anne-Marie, how do you, how would you prefer to be contacted? Your email's on the next slide. Oh, see, I, I, I'm smart. <laughs> um, but other than the Booster Club, just like general ways that you guys could help the team. Again, like Ms. Herzog was talking about, um, with the volunteer hours matching with like different companies or just like general monetary donations. It's always appreciated. It will go towards robotics and solely robotics. So it allows us to be able to do more things and include more people within it. Um, mentoring is also a very, very, very big and important thing that we need to run as a team. Um, obviously, if you have experience with like programming or mechanical stuff or electrical, like hardware, software, anything like kind of related to that kind of stuff, um, please reach out to like either our lead mentor Evan or Ms. Herzog and ask about mentorship because we will be having a mentor meeting soon where we can talk more about the specifics of it, but um, your skills are definitely appreciated. Also, even if like you would be willing to help out with like our business team or our media team or anything like that, like you, if you're just willing to come and show up and provide feedback regardless, I think anything like everyone could be a mentor. You don't really have to be a mechanical engineer to mentor a robotics team. Um, our business team definitely 
would love more support from parents and who would become mentors um, because our auction is primarily focused towards parents, so your input is um, greatly appreciated within that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add to that, Kitty. Um, I'm gonna beg, actually. <laughs> I'm <just laughs> begging. I'm begging for uh, somebody who will help uh, Andrea Ordeen, who is our wonderful business mentor. But her daughter's uh, graduated two years ago, and she's continuing to help our team out of the wonderful goodness of her heart. And she would love to have some other parent or parents come join her to mentor the business team. Um, you don't even have to be a, a business guru to be able to do this. Just somebody know, you know, knows how to balance a checkbook. Uh, you know, and who is, you know, willing to help out and, you know, help guide the, the students. Um, and then also another area, like Kitty had mentioned, I'm going to beg for is somebody to help uh, Laura Ohada, who is our wonderful media mentor. Her son's graduating this year, and I don't know if we'll be able to keep her around next year, and she's doing wonders with that team. So we need somebody to help with um, media and um you know, and business. Um, and then anybody who's uh, mechanically inclined, you don't even have to be a mechanical engineer. If you know how to use power tools, you can definitely help our mechanical team. Um, so just any of the, anybody who's willing to come and just help supervise kids too, just to be there is also very, very welcome. So I'm begging, <laughs> begging for help. Thank you. Yeah, especially like during build season and stuff. That's when like our meetings are going to be at later times. So mentor available like that's going to be for like more robot related stuff. It will meetings will be from like five to like nine ish on like weekdays and then like Saturdays will have like a full meeting. But like if you can't come like immediately after school during build season, those time periods are like are are available. So so it would be more accessible for like parents and people who have like jobs to like come after that and donate your time. But again, if you're interested, please contact Ms. Herzog or and also fill out the survey. If the QR is the QR code working, has anyone tried the survey yet? It should be working. I th it should be fine, but if it isn't, please let me know and I'll just like put the link in there. Um, but also our parent committees, which is on the actually Maybe I should. Uh, I'll just go to the next slide and it, I'll put the link in the. OK, it works. Yeah. Um, if someone would put the link to the survey in the chat, just so like people can still access it while I'm talking, that'd be great. Um, anyways, so. Along with our like parent. Um, thank you, Miss Dooley, along with our mentors and stuff. We would really like to have like proper parent committees. So like this adds to like just like your guys' support with everything. So for fundraising, our lead is Alyssa Wong, um, our business lead. And then for outreach, Lucy Stewart, who is our outreach lead, travel slash logistics, um, Miss Dooley and Julian Atkinson, who are our logistics people. And then for the parent boosters, Anne Marie, obviously, and their contact information is in there. I would I listed the information for the other students and their slides previously, but for fundraising business at robotos.com and for outreach outreach at robotos.com. You can also find it on our website, which is just dub 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 dot robotos.com. Um, but like outside of our committees, we need parents help with providing food at competitions and at longer team meetings and driving carpools. So even if you can't like donate all of your time to help out, even if it just means like bringing food one time for students or driving some kids up to a competition if necessary, we would really, really appreciate that. More information on like those specific things will be sent out as like we need them, but um, your willingness to like help out and participate is greatly appreciated. And we couldn't do it without you guys, so we really appreciate um, your involvement. But yeah, so that's kind of all we have. Does anyone have any questions um, about anything that was said? Because that was kind of a lot of information, so I don't really want to 
brush over it. Um, but did I did I miss anything? Do any like mentors or other students want to? Oh, Bryce, yes. I was it was mentioned to me that I needed to sign my daughter up on the actual RFC website. Is is there a process or instructions for that so I make sure I do it in the right way? Herzog, do you want to take that one? I, I don't so, want to say that. Thing. Okay. Yeah, so it's the first inspires. Um, I think th I think that must be what she meant. The first inspires website. So uh, students uh, make their own login, uh, request to join the team. I add them to the team. Then they send an email to their parent asking their parent to make a login at first inspires and then um, connect to their student. Um, and then uh, sign the consent and release form. Um, Kitty just put a link to First Inspires in the chat. Um, Bryce, this is something I'm sure you did for Ian for several years in a row. It's just the same thing it's at First Inspires. So it, it's nothing new. I mean, does that help at all? <laughs> OK, good. But yeah, just to clarify, you'll need to make an account so that you can sign the consent and release form for your um, student that's on the team, just so like everything is legal with that. First just requires it. Um, also, I don't think we mentioned this, but we do have a student handbook that must be signed by you and um, your child. So some of you may have signed that already, but if not, um, yeah, so Ms. Dooley put a link to our um, handbook in the chat, handbook.robotos.com. You can read through it there. Um, it's just got like, again, general information about robotics and what your involvement may look like. But um, yeah, we need that turned in as soon as possible. So like the main things for like parents to sign, like signing stuff right now is just like giving the signing consent and release for First Inspires, signing the handbook that we have, and paying the team fee through um, Samam, like the Samam, like BSD, like Samamish ASB fee thing. I think that's like the final forms fee. I don't know. I, no, I'm not it's a parent. through TouchBase. It's oh, through okay, TouchBase. Yeah. It's where uh, parents pay all fees. It's the same, it's the same website. So it's touch base. Um, could t positions available for parents who could volunteer less than three times a season? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, Kitty, you could take that. I, I can also just say um, probably um, helping with um, possibly, like if we have an outreach event that lasts, um, like sometimes we'll go to, um, an elementary school to their uh, STEM night or science fair. And, you know, we take our robot and we need parents to volunteer our students or volunteer to go with our students. Um, and so like a two or three hour, you know, STEM fair would be great if a parent can just, you know, wants to just volunteer for one thing. Um, Miss Dooley says drive one carpool um chaperone one event or provide one meal those are all wonderful ideas um if if we could get all of our parents to be willing to do one of those things we'd be set so thank yeah thank you that's a good question um and three times a season that's a lot <laughs> so we really appreciate that yeah um and there will be a lot more information coming out um, from our logistics um, communicators about events where we need parent help. So, you know, you don't have to join a, a committee with multiple meetings. Um, there's going to be lots of different opportunities to do just something here, something there. And uh, we really need those. So thank you. Um, yes, they do. Uh, parents do need special credentials to drive a carpool. Uh, Miss Dooley, You've been trying to help with that. You want to talk to the what the parents have to do? Sure. Um, I actually started doing this back in August because I knew we were going to have some off-season events, and it takes a couple weeks to get it through the transportation system. 
but um, if you're interested in the in driving the carpool, Stephanie, I can send you um, the I can send it through Tristan or I can just send it directly to you. I think I still have your email. Um, there's a form you fill out and then you return it and I have people return it to me um, with their insurance card and um, driver's license photocopied so that I can turn it into transportation. And the big thing is if you go through me, it comes from an internal email and oops, I accidentally raised my hand and uh, uh, transportation is less likely to misplace it. Also, if you haven't done everything right, I will tell you uh, transportation may or may not depending on how busy they are and how many requests they have. Right now, I think we have about eight drivers on the team. They're all parents. Students are not allowed to drive uh, carpool for anything that is official team events. Frequently, some of our seniors on the team will uh, give people rides or do things after the meeting is over, when the school event is over. Um, so if that's something you're interested in having other parents here, um, you know, your kids can reach out to kids on the team there, especially my child who's gas and insurance I pay and tell them to take anyone home who needs it because that's what everybody did for me when I was in high school. Um, so yeah, I will be sending something out when I probably in December next month so that we can get um, drivers ready in case we need anything for the winter for the kickoff. Um, okay, I don't know if we have any more questions, but we are come. Oh, aha. Do mentors need to do anything? Uh, it w what's relating to what specifically like? I think both FIRST and BSD require a background check and you got to do a, do a bit of paperwork before you can be a mentor, like officially through the school system. And yeah, right. And uh, so for FIRST Robotics, I'm only required to have uh, two of us, um, myself and Evan Klein, have gone through the background check um, process. I it, I uh, encourage all my mentors to go through the background check process, but it's not required for first. Um, but for BSD, it is required. So uh, Bellevue School District does require a background check. And, and, and so I'll go over that with anybody who's either emails me and says they're interested in mentoring. And this is not for people who just want to do a volunteer, uh, like carpool. Of course, carpool is its own has its own background check through transportation, but um, uh, you know, just showing up for uh, chaperoning for this or that, you don't have to go through the BSD background check. But if you're gonna be a team mentor, I'll talk to those people at a mentor meeting or if people wanna email me separately, um, I can show them how to go through, fill out all the paperwork for a background check. I think that answers just, that question. Yeah. Just for just for your thing, that background check goes, the thing goes really fast. I did it. And it's like online. You get back, the results back within an hour or something. It's not like you have to give blood or anything. No, no, and it doesn't cost anything either. It's free. Bellevue School District pays for it. Yeah. All right. I think that's all the questions that we have. If you have any further things. Feel free to email like captain at robotos.com or hers on k at bsd.org. Um, just contacting like anyone. Um, we're here to answer questions. We want you guys to be involved and we're really excited for this upcoming season. It's going to be great. I'm really happy to be back in person. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming to this uh, parent meeting today. Uh, really thankful for everyone who participated. Hope you guys learned something. I know. Even I did, and I was presenting it. But um, again, contact us if you need anything. Check out our website, www.robototes.com. And we hope to see you at our next meeting. Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you have a great night.
Thank you so much and thank you Kitty for doing an awesome job. <laughs> I'll stop recording now. Okay. Thank you.